We had a recent discussion. Somebody was having difficulty with their uh, sender slipping on the line. This is kind of a conclusion. I'll go through some more explanation in the rest of the video. But notice, if you go straight up and down on a climbing line, it engages well, no slip. If you step forward, you'll get slip. If you step back, you get better engagement, plus it pushes you forward against the climbing line, and makes you more efficient when you're doing a rope walker. This is a left foot ascender. Just like, here's a CMI, but left, left foot ascender. Notice that the, the back of the body is towards the back. On the left foot ascender, your technique to making a pantin, a pantin stay on your foot was to do basically a backwards bicycle. You would push forward on your line to keep that in the channel. Then when you got ready to make your step, you'd come back and push down. That would keep your pressure going towards the front of the line to make you efficient, but keep it from slipping. So it was a back and then push the foot down. Notice, notice the orientation on the panton is exactly the same is the orientation we have because the socket generally goes on your left foot it's the same orientation the the back of the foot ascender is towards the back of the socket and the back of the uh, panton what that means is that when you take a step on the socket having it on your left foot step straight up the line and if you do anything, when you step down, have your foot towards the back of the line. That will push you forward, make you more efficient. I'm not a competition climber, but if it was competition, if it was NASCAR, and I was looking for that split second, half a second, that would make a difference, then having something that's very efficient like this, that can go straight up a climbing line without having to rotate your foot, uh, may save you some seconds. We had a recent discussion and someone was having issues with some slip on a rope. And I want to go over the design of the hand ascenders and the foot ascenders and the chest ascenders to try to clarify proper technique, efficient technique in using a rope walking system and how the socket has been designed and luckily the way things worked out, it just happens that the ascender that we use has just the perfect orientation for what we're after. So here's a hand ascender, and the hand ascender is designed so that the cam is easily accessible with a thumb. This is a right hand ascender. The rope channel on the left side, the cam on the right. Here is a left hand ascender. It's just basically oriented so that you can have easy access to that cam. Now notice the difference between that and a chest ascender. Here's a curl chest ascender. The orientation on this is different than the hand ascender. Here, it's assuming that it's against your chest. Most people being right-handed, they've placed the cam in a convenient location so that you can access it with your right hand. Again, notice that that is different than the orientation you have on a hand ascender. Here is a, another chest ascender. Same, same orientation. The cam is accessible with your right hand. When we put the uh, CT chest ascender on the socket body, the orientation will be different than what you normally have with a foot ascender. Let me show you the orientation of a foot ascender. Here is a right foot ascender. Now most of us are probably using a right foot, foot ascender more than a left foot ascender. The right foot ascender is configured so that the alignment 
down the rope channel is to the back. In other words, the back part of this ascender is facing behind you. That led to some of the past techniques of a reverse bicycle motion. The reverse bicycle motion was such that when you went up a rope, you would be applying pressure to keep the uh, ascender, to keep the foot ascender from coming out of the rope. This is a left foot ascender, meant to be put on your left foot. When it's put on your left foot, the back of the ascender, which is facing behind you, and the rope channel where the rope aligns to is on, on the back side. So this is, this is on my left foot. Again, the orientation is behind you. Same thing with the CT. On left foot, same, same orientation. The channel is on the back side when you're using it on the left foot. Um, they're, all, they're all oriented that way. Here's a panton. And on the panton, left foot orientation, again the channel is on the back. That led to the technique that people were using to extend their foot forward so that the rope would stay aligned and in that channel. And then when they'd come back and take their step, they would engage the ascender and then step down. But you'd have this backwards bicycle motion. But the reason they'd come back is so that when you do step down, you want to be pushing yourself forward into the rope to make it more efficient. And when you move to a left or a right foot ascender, again, there's the channels facing the back side. All of them, CT, same way. Right foot ascender, channel faces to the back side. Panton, same way. Channel faces to the back side. Okay, so now we move to the design of the CT simple that I'm using on the socket. Notice that it is opposite. It is opposite to a chest ascender. It's not a chest ascender. It's sold as a hand ascender. The orientation then is completely different. The orientation on this is the same orientation that you'd find on a hand ascender. Being that this is sold as a hand ascender, it has exactly the same design. If you could, if you could just secure this to a handle, that's what would make it a hand ascender. Or you can just use it like a hand ascender. But the design is for a hand ascender and the channel is the same orientation as the hand ascender. Okay, so what makes that really great, besides the fact that this lays perfectly flat, perfectly efficient, and in alignment with the rope, we have the same orientation with that backside, with the, with the spline. We have the same orientation that you find on a left foot ascender. So the orientation, because most of us are climbing with the sock on our left foot and the foot ascender on our right foot, we have the same orientation as the foot ascender, as opposed to when I put a chest ascender, all of a sudden the configuration is backwards. Now the configuration is backwards to what you would find on the left foot ascender. Why is that important? And here's an example of why that orientation is so important. If you step forward, in other words, if, you're, if your step is not in alignment with the climbing line, notice how easily that starts to slip. As soon as you're in alignment, it does not slip anymore. Same thing with a Kong Ascender. As long as your, your movement, your climbing movement, your steps are in alignment with the climbing line, which is most efficient, it'll always grab. If you lean forward at all, it easily starts to slip. Now if you lean forward and you take a step like that, you're not only getting that slip, 
but you're also forcing your body weight backwards away from the climbing line, which is less efficient. So the most efficient way to climb is to lift your legs straight up, and if you do anything, lean backwards. Remember that old technique of the holding the pantene? You'd rock your foot forward, you'd point your toes down. That's what was helping to engage that pantene on the climbing line. So if you do anything, step straight up and step back a little bit when you take your step. It will always engage, plus stepping back pushes you forward into the climbing line and makes your climb more efficient. The design and the orientation of the Sokka is perfect for that. Because now we have the same orientation that you would find on a left foot ascender. Here's a left foot ascender right there. The body is to the back. Exactly the same orientation. And the alignment is straight up and down the rope. And now when you take your step, you want to step straight up. And if you do anything, step on the back side of the climbing line so that it pushes you forward into the rope. Bigger lines will even be worse. And I, I have a hard time getting this to slip. But if you step forward like this, that'll, that'll cause that socket to slip. And if you have an exceptionally large line, these are good up to a 13 millimeter line. So if you're using a 12.7 millimeter line and it's been worn, it's actually gotten a little bit bigger than that, that will lead to the slip if you're stepping forward and stepping down when you're stepping forward. Besides making you less efficient, it uh, also is more conducive to the ascender slipping. A recent discussion on the use of the Sokka gave me a cause to put out a little bit of more information. I'm not liking the way this is going. I'm not liking what I'm saying. So Keep going so you can cut it out. I'll cut it out. Um, we had a recent discussion. Somebody was having some slip issues with their knee ascender, the, the Sokka. And so I've done a little bit of... Um, we had a recent discussion.